So welcome to my weekly coaching session with Lytton, who is the guru of my limbo system, which I'm wearing on my wrist, on my arm, and it's in my bathroom. So Lytton, you're going to give me these weekly coaching sessions. Am I going to be crying by the end of this session? Absolutely not, Jody. I think, uh, so since you and I met, on GB News not that long ago. I think uh, I've been following you, watching your, your progress in limbo. Uh, and I think what I wanted to do with you is kind of really take you through some of the stuff that we know in the back end that you won't know. As a single user of limbo, what you don't get to do is you don't get to look at everybody else's data. I'm in the privileged position of having over 15 million, da million data points at hand and uh, having been versed in the science of limbo and blood glucose and weight loss. So what, what I thought I wanted to do is kind of um, show you some of the back end, what we see of you. Um, yeah. <clears throat> you literally have a blood glucose sensor attached to your arm, which is transmitting to limbo's cloud server. There we go. Um, and what happens with that is, first of all, it, it transmits to your phone, right? So you've got this um, constant blue or red line that you see. Yeah. And that's the thing that I really want to coach you into getting control of. I'm not a personal fitness trainer. I'm not a nutritionist. What I am is somebody that works for a company that uh, has taken some new technology. And all that new technology does is it allows you to see your body's natural weight loss mechanism. It allows you to see it. So when you can see it, you can start to understand it. When you understand it, you can start to change it. So me personally, uh, I, I was kind of, I was about 95 kilograms, 94 and a half kilograms when I joined Limbo. And I've been trying to lose weight. I've been doing all sorts of trying to lose weight and I'd accidentally been putting weight on. Um, and within five months, I'd lost 25 kilograms. And it felt like magic at the time. But you know, I've been here for a year and a half now. And I've been taking people through the same process. Um, when I say taking people through, I only really work with the the kind of, you know, our, our brand ambassadors, a few celebrities, uh, you may have seen me with a couple on, on TV, whatever. Yeah. Um, everybody else kind of does it on their own. All you do is you slap it on your arm, you connect it to your phone, and you do what, you, what it tells you to do. And when I say what it tells you to do, yes, there's a team of analysts in the back end and they've got a bit of artificial intelligence that you use. But yeah. really what happens is every user looks at Limbo screen and goes, oh, so, so that line is where my blood sugar level is right now. And that's yours. So there's two lines I can see. There's the blood sugar level, which is the top line. Um, and then there is your heart rate as well, which there, there's several things that we do with your heart rate. And there's lots of other stats we take in as well. But really what's important is the blood sugar, because I mentioned that your body has a natural weight loss mechanism. Yeah. Your blood sugar is what your body uses to uh, manage its energy level. So you know how um, your, your body has a, a way to regulate its temperature. If you get hot, you start to sweat and you come down to a temperature. If you get cold, you shiver, and we're always around about 37 degrees. And if you're not 37 degrees, then you know there's something wrong with you. Well, your body's trying to regulate lots of other stuff as well. And blood sugar is one it's constantly trying to regulate. It's trying to regulate to a zone, which for the average human is around about a teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of sugar yeah. in your entire bloodstream, which is for the average human around about five liters. Imagine that's five bottles of like mineral water. That's not very much sugar. So what happens to a lot of people, uh, me included, is we we eat food that makes uh, that puts in way too much energy into our system. Uh, way too quickly so I was definitely doing it. I was writing this week about um, meal replacement shakes and how what they do is it's a bit like injecting the the sugar into your body instead of chewing it all up and letting it go in slowly we take in too much energy too fast and our bodies just say okay Jody okay Lytton, well done for taking that energy in I will keep it for later and that's yeah. all that is. it's just stored energy it's a reservoir of energy you've been working with people for absolutely years and, you know, I've watched your transformation when it comes to doing exercise. What you're doing is you're going out there and getting people to use that energy up. And that's where it goes. It doesn't, I mean, you don't poo it out. You burn off fat yeah. by getting your body to use it up. So that line represents your energy level. When you are above a certain zone, which uh, most 
members actually what they find when they join limbo is it's not that they're constantly over the zone what they do is they eat and they have a spike and they have a crash the spike is where there's too much energy inside your body the crash is where your, your body says hey there's way too much sugar in the blood let's store some away for later um and there's a hormone called insulin which, which helps your body kind of store its energy the crash is where you kind of end up feeling hungry again a couple of hours after you've eaten something like a couple of croissants for breakfast and you go oh 11 o'clock yeah. and you eat again and then you go and eat something like some popcorn a rice cake and you kind of go whoop, up again and then down again up and down and what happens with the blood sugar roller coaster is not only does it wear you out during the day and make you feel constantly like you need more energy because what you're doing is not you're not using it you're you're actually um you're storing a lot of it and then you just go looking for food before you've been able to draw on your fat reserves um the blood sugar roller coaster also long term it's not so good for you because it wears out your um your response to excess energy so people talk about insulin resistance and it's one of the things that i don't think you'll mind me saying on air not the at all. problem that you've been public about right so yeah. your your body has a a little problem with blood sugar which is you are well above the zone a lot of the time because of your your diagnosis and that's the thing that that for me, I really want to work with you on because I watch type two diabetics come into limbo and go, wow, I didn't realize this could happen. And what yeah. they do is they see that system and go, oh, I can actually start to change this using uh, the choices I make every day. Do I decide to do this or the other? So the, the process I want to take you through, I don't want to go in depth because the minute uh, I think anybody gives somebody a diet or anything like that. I don't believe diets work because diets are this prescriptive thing with a begin and end. I think what what has to happen for you, just like anybody else, is you have to gradually arrive at lifestyle changes. Limbo will do that for you as an app which is connected to hardware, which is connected to humans and a big old computer. But what I really want you to do, and this is why I'm so interested in working with you, is I want you to tell people who uh, aren't going to ever sign up for Limbo because, you know, there's a cost to it. There's a cost to monitoring yourself in this way. I want you to kind of educate the world about what they can do as well because there's some healthy habits that you can easily pick up. So yeah. that, that's kind of my coaching bargain with you. I want you to kind of get under the bonnet of one thing a week with me um, and, and really understand what's going on. So currently... Um, Talk me through what your experience of, of limbo has been, as in you've started limbo, you've monitored your blood sugar. What do you know about yourself? That I, I'm probably, I'm, I'm diagnosed officially as a type two diabetic, but as you've already noticed, I feel that I'm almost going on to type one because my body is becoming so insulin resistant. And I've noticed if I have a high protein product, even that takes me up high, you know, any sort of because I coach people through keeping yourself in balance. Whenever you have protein, you have a carbohydrate. But for me personally, it just doesn't work. You know, I have to have a lot of protein or a lot of fat and a really little bit of sugar just to stay in limbo that, you know, it's really educated me how messed up and how I need to be <laughs> really strict with my body. Let's talk about, first of all, just wanted to talk about type 2 diabetes and type 1. Um, they, they are they're completely separate things. So just to clarify, yeah. you can't go from being type 2 to type 1. So it's not like you graduate or anything. That type 1 is something people are born with. It's a, um, it's a problem with your pancreas. Type 2 is, is what a lot of people call um, diet-induced diabetes, which you know sounds much more uh, like it's pointing a finger. Don't like yeah. it so much uh, or diet related um so so that's one thing i just wanted to clarify there so type two if you're type two you'll always be type two yeah. um but I, are you the reason i said that is because i i feel i feel like i'm at the stage now where maybe i need insulin which is famous for type one diabetics to actually control it that's what mm -hmm. i was trying to make the point uh, and that that's a i can see exactly what you're saying and, and what i'm challenging you to do is work with me to start yeah. to understand more food sources where we never get you to the point because you and I are the same age, um, which is young. 
Uh, and <laughs> we, we are starting to both think about things like, look, are we going to be around to meet our, I mean, I don't know, great grandchildren for you, grandchildren for me, maybe, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, because I've only got, like, I've got very young kids, but we're starting yeah. to think ahead. And also the things that we used to do, I mean, when you first started your career losing weight, your body was able to lose weight much faster and better then compared to now. Yeah. The things that you do are changing. Uh, once you start thinking things like, well, my future is I'm going to have to have insulin. Uh, I think you're on a path to not having any control over your own health. So what I want to do here is start the Jody revolution, which is no, let's take control of your health. No insulin because yeah. your body still making insulin uh, i'm not a doctor here so this isn't medical advice i'm giving you it, it's just that i've spoken to lots of people who who say oh shit i thought i'd be on insulin in a year uh and look at me now our founder was pre-diabetic and he was thinking that that was going to happen to him and it didn't so yeah. what i also know though with me saying that i'm not i'm not talking to you as a medical expert i'm talking to you as somebody who can see what you had for breakfast because you posted a photo of it yes. uh i know car you drive and i know where you parked it because i can see that too but let's not try and creep you out here Big what, brother. What I, <laughs> whenever you post food i can see it that's the point of the, this kind of contract we're in right yeah um tell me about the high protein foods that you're having that are making you spike what did you have recently that you know made you oh, spike? The, the biggest thing is things that are labeled high protein. So things like protein shakes, protein bars, which in the fitness industry, which I'm in, is, you know, almost everybody is taking them. So, and I've got into the mistake of having this processed food that's high protein, but actually it's processed crap. This is the problem. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we, we've got, I can, to, to name a brand, uh, you've got a lot of grenade stuff, which is uh, very, very kind of... Uh, we Prevalent. sell it at our gym. <laughs> so it's in front of me all the time, Litvin. Very, very prevalent. Now, ultra-processed foods are a problem for a lot of us because ultra-processed foods are, are just the most convenient thing. They're the easiest thing to reach for. Um, when you're eating grenade bars and drinking shakes, uh, here's what you're doing. You, your body is, unfortunately, my body, everybody's body, it, it's still very much stone-aged hardware. So it's evolved to a certain point, but then human development and technology just went straight past it. Uh, our bodies have not evolved to keep up with farming and abundance of food. They're still kind of looking at feast and famine. That's why we're so good at storing fat yeah. because our body is saying, right, if you put all this excess energy in it, you must need it in winter or something. Um, what we're suddenly throwing into that is um, food adjacent products inside ultra processed food where uh although it says high protein um it only really has to be i think it's 20 percent protein to, to have that label on it um it's also generally high sugar and spotting the sugar on these labels is really hard because sugar has 70 plus different names it, it comes under so many names a lot of them not sugar and then you've got this other problem which is even if it is sugar it's not necessarily the simple sugar that you might um, have in there that's called something nice syrup which gives you a little clue it yeah. might actually be in the form of uh oats for example now oats are, are one of the, the huge ingredients that we see in limbo members uh timelines they they turn up drinking oat milk then they suddenly see a massive blood sugar spike and they say i don't know why that's happened yeah and they say oat milk is a healthy thing i bought it it says healthy on the label um, oat milk is an ultra processed food it's that's just a fact um, look at how many ingredients are in the oat milk that you buy uh, it's not because an oat has been milked so it's yes. you know there's lots of processing that happens anytime you have that level of processing in food generally you have a high level of carbohydrate which might be starch but as soon as that starch goes into your body your body breaks it down really quickly into simple sugars therefore your blood sugar spikes so even if you're um, even if you're having a, a protein high shake, there's a lot of sugar in there. And there's a lot of stuff that's about to turn into sugar the minute you start digesting it. And that's where those blood sugar spikes are coming from. You cannot get blood sugar spikes from protein and you cannot get blood sugar spikes from fat. But yeah. you can, in your body, turn protein into sugar and you need sugar because your body runs on glucose. Your body prefers to run on and your brain 
they both prefer to run on glucose. But what you need to do is you need to find a way to get that protein into you uh, in a way that is not shakes. Because here's what shakes do. You're, you're a Stone Age animal still, to a point. We hate admitting as human beings that we are animals, right? Because uh, we're the apex predator and we eat everything. But we are, you know, we are still animals. Um, you're in an ecosystem. So if you want to eat, let's take a really simple health product that's been healthy for forever, orange juice. Drink a bottle of like innocent orange juice, which is a health food, apparently. Um, there might be one ingredient in it because it's so natural. That's oranges and nothing else. That's all the label will say. Not an ultra processed food. Great so far. Drink it. And suddenly you find your blood sugar spikes through the roof. Yeah. Why? Well, because you've just consumed six oranges. Now sit down in front of me and eat six oranges. Yeah. Let's see if you manage to do it. You'll be bored. Your mouth will be full of fiber and you'll be like, oh my God. The processing that the factory does to your body takes a lot of the fiber out. Yeah. It takes the good stuff out uh, to a point as well. But the fiber is useful for digestion. It's indigestible carbohydrates. And what you do is you keep the, the sugar, you keep the digestible carbohydrates, and you take away the delaying mechanism, which is chewing and processing and digesting. And it's a bit like you may as well take a syringe and go bang, in it goes. And you that's just all right. Yeah. yeah. So your, your grenade products and your shakes are doing that. Anytime you mash something up, you're speeding up the process of getting energy out of that. So even if it's kale or something like that, you're speeding up the process of getting that into your body. So, so actually taking anything like um, anything proteiny and mashing it up, well, you'd have um, inside any protein shape and inside any grenade thing, you've got cocoa, you've got like chocolate stuff and whatever sometimes appearing in there. There's the processing factor that you've got to remove. How do you remove that? start going to whole foods uh, and i'd say when i look at what you've had this week uh, i can i can see sat on the desk is your grenade stuff that's almost certainly making you snack and then eat and then snack and then snack and snack yeah. um snacking is one of these habits that you can get out of you can lose the snacking habit in a couple of weeks instead of snacking on ultra processed food, I want you to start thinking, and this is the one thing I want to leave with you this week, because a lot of other things we'll work on over the weeks, yeah. but I want you to start thinking about, I don't want to need a snack in the mid morning. I don't want to need a snack in the afternoon because you're filling up on a more nutritious breakfast. That means your nutritious breakfast has to be protein heavy. That there's a, um, there's a famous woman, the glucose goddess, I don't know if you know of her, uh, Jessie and Chowsby. She has this lovely rule about try and have a savory breakfast. And I think that's a good rule when it comes to initially when you're still snacking a little bit, do not go for anything sweet because you'll always be craving more and more sweet stuff. It takes a couple of weeks to lose your sweet tooth. So that's the thing I want you to really focus on. For, for this yeah. week, I want you to focus on what you're having for breakfast because what you have for breakfast depending on on um, what the food is, will stop you snacking. And it means you're going to have to have, you'll probably eat more than you did before. Yeah. Um, certainly happens for nearly every limbo member I, I, I look at. What happens, they start off going, huh, I can't, I can't believe it wants me to eat protein and not my lovely, um, you know, croissant and pan au chocolate or whatever. What the hell am I going to eat? And then suddenly people are eating full on fry ups and going, hang on, isn't there a problem with the fat in this? Realizing there's not because they lose five kilograms in their first month. And then forevermore, they come back and they say, I can't believe I used to eat a pan au chocolat thinking there was enough energy to fuel me for until lunchtime. Yeah. What you find is you're, you're eating protein rich foods, which are meats um eggs fish uh cheese dairy stuff depending on what you can eat it's more of a case of fill yourself up with something that's going to take longer for your body to get the energy from so any carbohydrate that you eat in the morning um and, and you do everybody does better with carbohydrates in the morning than they do in the evening your body just um, uses them better any carbohydrate you have in the morning is like to make your blood sugar spike um, especially uh, because you haven't eaten overnight. So your body's trying to get energy into you as quickly as possible. In the morning, try really hard not to have your blood sugar rise. If you eat protein and fat, you cannot have your blood sugar spike outside of the limbo zone by doing that. And that's that's the one thing I want you to think about all week. And it's right. one thing I'll, I'll be checking in with you on. 
Um, grenade bars. Yeah, you're in the habit of eating them. It might take you a little while to get out of the habit of eating them. But I bet you anything, after two weeks of eating a nutritious breakfast, which has got some healthy amount of protein, not too many carbohydrates, and some kind of leafy green vegetable in, I bet you anything you won't be wanting a grenade bar for a snack. Because that's one of the things, you know those grenade bars are very slowly breaking your system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no apologies to the grenade brand. I know you, they, <laughs> but they have moderation, not relied on as meals. Right. So that's my mission then for this week is to eat real food and keep myself in limbo. And how do you identify real food? Well, stuff that looks like food, stuff that if you put in front of my kids who are five years old, they go, oh, yeah. That's a piece of meat. That's a piece of cheese. They'll understand it. Put a grenade bar in front of them. They'll be like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a building block, right? Yeah. Um, stuff that a cartoon character would see as food. And one of the ways to do this is look at the labels and look at how many ingredients are in them. The fewer yeah. ingredients and the more the things you recognize as food are at the front of those labels, the more you've got a whole food. Wonderful. Right. I'm up for the challenge. I'm ready to do it, Lytton. So we'll check in again next week, this time next week. Um, yeah. I'm going to get my team at work to talk me through how to use Facebook Live so I don't make an embarrassment of myself again. Um, and we'll do it over Facebook. And I'll, I'll check in with you and I'll reveal a new secret about your body and carbohydrates. When I say a secret about your body, I'm only talking about your blood glucose. Okay. <laughs> I was a little bit scared there. <laughs> Great. Right. We'll speak next week then. Thank you, Lytton. See you next week. Have right. some great breakfast.